Cedric, Ailey, and Paul. I'm gonna throw it over to Ailey and Cedric right now for the upper quarterfinals. Thank you very much, Maria. Welcome to the upper quarterfinals of the Innistrad Championship. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Cedric Phillips, and we are gonna put someone into the World Championship right after this game, Cedric. Well, match, I should say. But I am looking forward to it. I cannot wait. Absolutely love this Golgari deck. But it's up against another powerful contender in the hands of the reigning world champion. What do you think of this matchup? It is more or less, I think, what everybody has said leading into this. I wish I had something kind of fun to say, no, 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 is it Phoenix is gonna win? This is what's gonna happen. This is so hard for Izzet Phoenix. It really, really is. This Golgari food deck that has been brought to this tournament has been dominant in the matchups it's supposed to be dominant in. And assuming good hands and great gameplay, which are things I would expect, from Ishikawa, I think this should be advantageous for him, but stranger things have happened on the Sunday stage. <laughs> they sure have. Let's take a look at the opening hands here. And just to give you an idea of how bad this matchup is, or is it? Golgari Food has a 71% win rate over it this weekend. That is quite a number. That's a lot. That is a, that's a very large number. Very, very large number. So, you know, you, you you don't want to think about that before the matchup, but, you know, that's got to be in the back of these players' minds. They know that this is not going to be an easy fight. As we get things underway, Dragon's Rage Chandler down on the battlefield. We've got that little plant token and now a goose. So the powerful zero-powered creatures have, uh, have they've hit the battlefield. Yeah, the thing, that, the thing that's really nice about this Golgari food deck is that a lot of its spells are just really, really cheap. And mm -hmm. so that means you get to take a lot of game actions per turn. Uh, just a couple of one drops to start the game off there. Of course, we see the Mythic Massacre, which is a thing that you can dump a ton of mana into if you'd like to. And of course, when a lot of your spells are cheap, that allows you to play an extremely powerful card like Lurus of the Dream Den. Not a lot of companions actually running around in Historic mm -hmm. this weekend if you kind of review the tournament, which is a little bit surprising. But if you can find a deck that can harness Lurus, which is such a powerful card, you got to be really happy about that. And Ishikawa does have one. I love that this deck is just been streamlined from the Jun Sacrifice shell that we've seen previously. It's just, no, we don't really need that. We don't need the Mayhem Devil, which was the main appeal to it, as well as Claim the Firstborn in certain instances. As we see, Spikefield has a take care of that Shambling Goss, so no minus one, minus one, and no treasure either, as it's going to get exiled. <laughs> I like this attack here. <laughs> like, do I actually want to block? All right, well. <laughs> Like, what a could go wrong? Of, yeah, a little bit of fun early gamesmanship. Here's a consider. <laughs> There's a trigger. It's possible. Oh, oh. Are okay. we going to get to a 3-3? Three, three? Let's see. Is this an instant? There's a creature. Had a sorcery. Yep. I think. So it needs to be a land here, basically. It needs to be a land, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In order to get all the way there, just to take care of a Gilded Goose, which you would, of course, prefer to have off the battlefield as opposed to yeah. on given its ad its advantages, excuse me, alongside Trail of Crumbs and so many yeah. other things in this deck. Yeah, Trail of Crumbs we do see in hand there for Ichikawa, so... We'll be a little bit disappointed if uh, this goose does die here, but it's a it survives, so it lives to see another turn. That's a bit of a sigh of relief, I think, there, as now Trail of Crumbs, Gilded Goose can get up to their card-drawing nonsense that we've seen this weekend. This deck has gone absolutely haywire in certain matches for Ichikawa. And I'm here for it. Yeah, really just trying to, is Ishikawa, just to play a longer game. Uh, it's advantageous for him that the longer the game goes, the better it is. Now, a lot of the time you would think that that's not true against Is It Phoenix, a deck that has a lot of card draw, has expressive iteration, has faithless looting, right? The Is It Phoenix deck can go for a very, very long time. Keep recurring the Phoenixes, big Kraken mm -hmm. Drake, so on and so forth. Not the case here. The better long game is for the food deck because of Trail of Crumbs, because of Lurus, because of Meat Hook Massacre, and because of Cauldron Familiar and Witches Oven and all that other nonsense. So <laughs> advantage Ishikawa the longer the game goes. Rightly so. You never expect a, a green-black deck to draw better or have a full grip of cards over an Izzet deck. But here we are. Expressive Iteration is going to do its best for the reigning world champion. So we take a look at Consider and an Ox of Agonis. A couple of goodies here to think about. Looks like Consider is going to go to the grip. Pathway over here, Oxvagonus, not so much. One thing that I was thinking about as I was kind of analyzing the deck lists last night and early this morning was, naturally, 
if you're going to be on the is side of things, you have to think to yourself, okay, look, the matchup is bad, but how can I win? What's my game plan to maybe steal a game? Is it an early arc light Phoenix faithless looting, like double Phoenix draw, and things don't come together? Things don't come together for my opponent. Okay, maybe. But another way to do it is Crackling Drake because it's so big. Yeah. And it puts a lot of stress on Ishikawa having Gilded Goose to chump block or Ooh. Fatal Push to actually kill. As you're going to see, consider actually turn on this Dragon Rage Chandler. And now perhaps this, uh, perhaps this Fatal Push is going to go that way. And that's one less Fatal Push that takes care of the aforementioned Crackling Drake that can steal a game because it hits for so much damage so quickly. So as we watch these games unfold, thinking about how Takahashi can maybe steal a game, I do think it revolves around Crackling Drake being extremely large. That's what we're going to be working towards for Yuta Takahashi. As we'll see the goose on the end step, sacrifice the food, generating that mana, take a look at the top and find a Blooming Marsh as well as a Shambling Ghost. So let's grab the Ghost. There's another Fatal Push. So yep. that is very, very good now for Yuki Ichikawa. He's setting himself up excellently in this matchup. And now one thing that this deck doesn't do, like you mentioned, is it doesn't close things out quickly. You know, it's a slow burn. It's like a couple little pecks here and there, some life gain and drain, whereas on the other side of things, Yuta Takahashi can't kill you in one turn. It just takes a bit of setup to get that graveyard nice and full and get those birds flying. Yeah, th both these decks do have some assembly required, which is what I like to say, but <laughs> one of the things that, I mean, one of the things that's so compelling and so powerful about this Golgari food deck is it does just kind of grind you down and grind you down and gets to a point where it's inevitable that it will win through its engines, through its Trail of Crumb engine, which is so incredibly difficult to, to overcome and beat. If you think about the decks coming into this event that we expected to do well, yeah, maybe there's a Mayhem Devil deck out there. Uh, we knew Slicing of Humans was going to be big. We knew, of course, that Is It Phoenix was going to be big. And when you think about that, you think of a bunch of decks that don't really rely on an enchantment like Trail of Crumb. So a lot of players really aren't prepared to beat it, which makes a lot of sense. All right, so as you're going to see... This big old crackling Drake hit the battlefield here, draws a card, and unfortunately it's going to meet its doom. As uh, we see an activation here off Trail of Crumbs. Could have gone for the Fatal Push there, but more interested in getting the Soul Guide Lantern off the top of the library. And that's that's the other key card I wanted to mention oh. in the matchup. Soul Guide nice. Lantern is very impactful against Is It Phoenix. I, breaking news, I know, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh faithless looting of course you can you can manage that you mm -hmm. can take care of arc light phoenixes and, and stuff now you know it's it's not always gonna be an a plus but it's it's more often than not gonna be like a b minus like it's got a high ceiling but it's also got a high floor right and at the very worst it can trips you can bring it back with lures yada 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 really really nice card to have around um finding that card to kind of contain things but you don't have to break it right away is really really nice mm. and now you've also got crackling drake managed with the second copy of push so again Ishikawa just kind of settling in, oh, not yeah. in a rush, just slowly building an advantage. That's all that's happening here. Dragon's Rage Chandler is the draw here for you to Takahashi. The seven fork can effectively, it's 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 managed. It does have that annoying text on it that it does look at cards in exile too, so yep. it it won't get it won't get tiny, but it will make the Dragon's Rage Chandlers one ones yet again and. Uh... Yeah, can't get rid of any phoenixes if they are hanging out in the bin there. And, and, and if you think about this particular turn that's taking place, so an expressive iteration got cast. And I don't know if our wonderful, our wonderful viewers, excuse me, noticed, but Ishikawa with just an affirming head nod, which is sure. And, and the reason I mention this is because it is very rare that expressive iteration doesn't matter, that mm -hmm. you don't care because the card is so powerful. But as Ishikawa is developing this battlefield and working towards this inevitability, what, take a look at a couple of cards. I've got Trail of Crumbs going. It's not going anywhere. My draw engine is better than your draw engine. Mm -hmm. I've got your graveyard managed. I've got your Crackling Drake managed. And if anything gets a little too hairy, I've got this Meat Hook Massacre. And oh, by the way, <laughs> Lurus is also at the ready. So he's comfortable in the situation he's in and with very good reason. Now, firmly in control at this point in the matchup. What does Takahashi have to string together here to swing that advantage bar in his favor, Cedric? And that's a great question, and that's a tough question to answer right now, right? Because Soul Guy Lantern's got Phoenix on lock. Looks mm -hmm. like we're going to get a little chump block here, perhaps. See an activation of the goose, maybe a sacking of the food in the push. We'll see, of course, because we could just see a simple chump block. Lurus gets the goose back, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, exactly. So what it, what does Takahashi need? Maybe another crackling Drake. Um, Phoenix draws aren't, aren't going to be great right now. DRCs are just okay, but they're managed because of the Soul Guide Lantern. So this is a tough question that you asked me early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It you really need some is. Coffee before we. Yeah, get... <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> tough leads. question. Yeah, because I'm looking at Takahashi's hand and I'm just like, okay, well, Dragon's Rage Chandler, sure, cool. It can filter off the top of the library for you. It's not going to be very impactful on the battlefield, though. As you mentioned, the graveyard is in check. We have an insurance policy for Yuki Ijikawa with that Soul Guide Lantern. That's like, okay, uh, I guess I just try hit you, keep Lurus in check, kill your geese. Because there are answers for, for Lurus and Goose. Well, what I what I find to be so compelling, right, is as you try to pick apart what Ishikawa is doing, right? I can answer Goose, I can answer Luris, I can answer a lot of your creatures. Is it Phoenix does that very well? And Takahashi's build of Is it Phoenix does that very well. But once the one thing that he can answer, enchantments, trail crumbs, yeah, trail crumbs, nothing clean, gust temporary, that's it. Even then, so if, if gust it, it comes back, you get a food again. Yeah, so it's, like, it te it, it's a temporary answer to a very real problem. Here comes the powerful little companion, Kitty Cat. Oh, my Lurus favorite. The dream Den. My oh, favorite. Yes. Sorry, Don't leave Orion. home without it. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I'm glad you and I agree there. Goose is going to come back, or at least attempt to, and uh, Ethergoss is going to say, nope. Back to hand you go. He can still cost it, though. Interesting choice here. Well, Gus is going to put it right back on oh, top right of the Oh, right back on deck. top. Yeah. Excuse me, yes. Here, here's the garden. Make the plant. And Luris is managed, and and I and one thing I'm sure Ishikawa knows in, in this matchup, of course, is that Luris is not going to stick around for long. We're looking at a deck here from Takahashi that has, oh, let's run it down, shall we? Um, three Flame Blessed Bolts, four Unholy Heat uh, as ways to just cleanly kill that card for one mana. So Luris is never really going to stick around too long in these games. Mm -mm. But I would like to bring something back along the way. Yeah, so that Gus just uh, coming up the top of the library and not getting any value really off of Lurus. Faithless looting. Let's have a look, see on the top of the library here. There's an opt into the graveyard. Can we find some other goodies? Remember, no real Almost. reason, no real reason right now for Ishikawa to make a move with Soul Guide Lantern. Can mm -mm. just sit there with that. Nothing really to be concerned about. I, I think if we asked him right now, what do you think the chances are if your lure is making it through the turn? He would say zero, which is fine. <laughs> still have still have my Trail of Crumbs engine going. And by the way, we're on turn roughly six, seven-ish. Ishikawa's at 20. <laughs> Just something else to note. Just sitting pretty here. Couple more cards go into the graveyard. Let me see some death and destruction here from you to Takahashi. Yeah, Takahashi is just curious on which removal spell to use. Should it be Unholy Heat or Flame Blessed Bolt? It looks like it's going to be Unholy Heat here. It's going to trigger the DRC. Mystical Dispute, not for this matchup. <laughs> yeah, so... Get out of here, blue card. We need the red stuff. Flame Blast Bolt's going to take care of this little shambly goss once again, so no value off of that as it will be exiled. There's another Unholy Heat on top of the library. Takahashi, not too happy about that. It, it kind of just feels like this is a deck. It's just, it's just, it doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't know what to do against it, but it, it that's kind of what it feels like, right? It's just like, uh, mm, this, that, yes? Ooh, big stretch. I like that. Oh, <laughs> big yeah, stretch. Big stretch comfy. before the draw stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows what he's drawing, which mm -hmm. is Gilded Goose. And so he can activate Trail of Crumbs right now and say, actually, I'd like to look at something else. See what my options are, because I might not want Goose anymore. I can improve my draw stuff here. So Well, you get a Goose. <laughs> yeah. Push, push going away is notable. I, I do mm -hmm. want to note that. Two pushes have been cast this game. That's a third push gone. Yep. So that's something Only to keep left. in mind. Yeah, so there's only one left kind of hanging around. And and as as awesome as I believe this Golgari food deck is, it kind of just managing creatures and what's going on there. As far as clean removal is concerned, it's four push and then uh, Meat Hook Master, we can call clean removal, I think, yeah. in this case, especially when you have this much mana to work with. 
Yeah, Meatwork Massacre is kind of the, the the top end of the deck, if I can put that in inverted commas. Yeah. Because you know, ideally, you're sacking a bunch of stuff. You get a ravenous squirrel that becomes a very, very large little critter, and you draw a bunch of cards off that. We haven't seen any of that yet. So that's maybe what's keeping Takahashi in this at the moment. Yeah, as much as as much as we have seen Trail of Crumbs kind of do its thing so far, we haven't seen Cauldron Familiar, we haven't mm -hmm. seen Witch's Oven, we haven't seen Ravenous Squirrel. Yeah, where are you, One Drops? We need yeah. you. Yeah, it, it is it is notable that those <laughs> really haven't shown up yet. Oh, okay, it's pigeon time. Let's go, big Arclight Phoenix down on the battlefield. We're gonna get swinging here. No air blockers. Yeah, give him the hook. There's some damage. Give him the, give him the hook. Damage. Yeah, we did. Down to 17. <laughs> Down. Well, bravo. Bra bravo. Up oh, to 20. Man. Oh, this is going to be... I'm, I'm wondering if Yuki is interested in just wiping this battlefield and exiting oh, that graveyard with Yuta Takahashi Hellbent. Absolutely. Give him the hook. <laughs> clean, clean it up. If you want it, you, you have the option to exile the graveyard if you want to. You don't have yeah. to right away because there's no real concern. But yeah, you, you, can just, you can just hook them real good. Clean, up, clean all this stuff up. You still have Meat Hook Massacre on the battlefield, of course. It's got text while it's out there. So, see you later. Still got my lantern. Have Deadly Dispute that I can trigger this with Hook on the stack. Nice. Yep, so this is this is nice sequencing. Hey! I know my Witch's Oven is, is finally showing up to the party. Could cost it if you wanted to. Yep. So this Get is... Some live. This is all going totally fine. Now, top card here at Takahashi's deck is an important one because it's yep. out of gas and now it gets to gas back up a little bit here. And not there from Yuki Ichikawa recognizes that that's a pretty darn good card to have on top of the library. No, no chance here to play the Arclight Phoenix, though, just a mana short. And uh, another very nice draw here in the Deadly Dispute. That's going to sacrifice an artifact. Draw some more cards. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, there kitty cat, go. there we go. There we go. There we go. And the cat's in the oven and it's making food. A little boy blue and the man on the moon, something along those lines. I'm sure that's how the song went. Now the yep, and you see that yeah, you yeah, see yeah, the yeah. Fermi head not here from from Takahashi because the the engine was yeah. like mostly online. Now we're all the way home. The MVP has arrived, Cedric. We yep. can just say that, right? Yep. The cat is here. The cat and the oven and the trail and feeling comfortable enough that now the hive wants to get busy. Don't forget the hive's got this text when it attacks. Exile a card. Oh yeah. So let Let's me find that phoenix. Birds. Yep. Let's let me get that there. phoenix out of here. Yep. Oh, hey, this is gonna be a heck of a climb here for Takahashi. Advantage very, very much in Ichikawa's favor right now. It's just keeping control of that battlefield so well. This ox, sure, it's a big old threat, but there's a cat in the way. It doesn't have trample. Has to go to the skies here with this Arclight Phoenix if he can chain together something. Let's see what Consider finds. Faith is looting, all right. Remember, Soul Guide Lantern still on the battlefield yeah. has had no has had no reason to use that at all. It more it just kind of sits there. I, I guess I'm, I'm going to call it like an enchantment in some respects. Yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah, I'm just just whatever. Just an insurance just whatever. In, in case anything gets a little too out of control. Now, Crackling Drake is a pretty nice draw. There is if there wasn't, another, yeah, if there wasn't another meat hook message. If there was <laughs> another hook over there, I would agree. Yep. Be because again, yep. as, as we're going to watch these games unfold, I do think that Crackling Drake trying to steal a game with a couple of big blows is, is something to look towards. Mm -hmm. But I, I realistically, if Ishikawa's deck is functioning as intended, <laughs> I, I just don't think one. that's ever going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's enormous. It's yeah. exactly what it needs to be. It's not hasty, though. That's the problem, Cedric. Yes. No haste. <laughs> this arc like uh, Phoenix trigger. Ishikawa can can say, do I care? I'm going to go with not really. He's sitting yeah, at a healthy 23. 23. I don't think yep. he cares much. I'm going to I'm going to clean that out along with the rest of the stuff that's on your battlefield. So that's fine. <laughs> Oxalagonis doesn't really get to do much work in this no. instance, of course, because Calder Familiar plus Witch's Oven. Oh no, so many things are gonna die. And here we get to do cat shenanigans. There's the Mayhem Devil-esque effect with 
Meat Hook Massacre pinging every single time. And uh, let's just wipe this battlefield, shall we? Let's see how quickly Takahashi concedes here, or if he thinks that there's still a glimmer of hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. He's like, yep, well, that's that's pretty much game over. <laughs> Hey, it's and just, we got a ravenous squirrel. Yeah, that awesome was awesome. maybe the only piece of the puzzle that was missing because yeah. now, if there's anything I like this early in the morning, it's triggers. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of them. So here we go. Oh, my God. Cat oven, found another oven, trail of crumbs, ravenous squirrel triggers, sacrifice this, got nom, meat nom, hook nom, nom. triggers. Oh, yeah, let's just, let's just get it going. Yeah, that's what I like to see. This is my cup of tea. I love the style of deck. And. <laughs> I'm so glad it's doing this well this weekend. Got another cat, got another oven, got another squirrel trigger. Got a... I don't know, what clears this entire battlefield, Cedric? What's a magic card that just murders everything? Because <laughs> he's going to need it at this rate. Yeah. Ooh, we... You can make up a card. I don't know, obliterate? Yes. That might, that, that's an oldie but a goodie. Okay, Oxmagonis, how you doing? Okay. Well, that's probably one of the best draws that uh, Takahashi could find. Oh, 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 hey now. Okay, I don't think it's going to matter, but those are pretty darn good draws. Okay. You okay. are excited. I, I mean, I'm trying to trying to just give him a little bit of, you know, you got this, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> it's not, you're probably not going to pay off here. But yeah, that's damn good. If you had some more life, I would say, okay, cool. He's in this, but he's at five. Yeah, he's at five and he's going to get drained out, and, and he knows that. And so we are all set here. Yucky, uh, this yucky. this matchup, it's when the bad. game goes, when the game. <laughs> so I was going to say when the game goes like that, Takahashi can't win. That's very obvious. The problem is the game's going to go like that a lot, yeah. unless some real changes take place in the sideboard that are impactful. And Takahashi even said it in the interview that he had with Corey. He said, this this is about as bad as it gets for me. Yeah. And And you saw exactly why over the course of that game because we didn't see oven plus cat early oh. we didn't see ravenous squirrel early we just saw trail do its thing timely removal with fatal push in the meat hook massacre using your life total as a resource never panicking with soul guide lantern and eventually inevitably mm -hmm. ishikawa knows i've got the better of this in this matchup in every way as long as my deck cooperates and it did in that first game now, looking at the sideboard plan here for both players, what's come in, what's gone out, and, like, I still think Ichikawa just has the better game post-board. I mean, there's not all that much that Takahashi can bring in. Sure, you know, there's a, there's a couple of negates, there's a braid, there's Prismari come on, but even then, it's just, it feels, it doesn't feel as powerful. Yeah, and, and the cards that, that Takahashi is bringing in, they're all fine. You know, negate is timely, Gus can be timely, Narset is is relevant, uh, same thing can be said for a braid to manage something like a witch's oven. Prismari command I'm going to try to do that. Chandra is a card advantage engine. So all of these mm -hmm. cards, they're fine. But they're not making the matchup appreciably better in my estimation. And, and for what it's worth, I don't think Ishikawa is making his deck appreciably better either. He's making it a little bit better, some slight adjustments, whatever. But the matchup's already so good, pre-board. Yeah. And Takahashi can't make the matchup appreciably better on his side post-board that if you're Ishikawa, you don't have to do anything too wild in your sideboarding. This is an interesting hand here. I will say for both players, because uh, Takahashi's kind of slow out of the gate here with mm -hmm. a lot of these Sulfur Falls, Spike Field Hazard, a Braid, very reactive cards. Uh, and then a Thought Seize is going to kind of unveil exactly what's going on in Takahashi's hand. Uh, but Ishikawa's hand also isn't great either with all these copies of Deadly Discord, so. <laughs> I love that. Instantaneously. Oh, Chandra, get out of here. Yeah, see ya. Yeah. No touchy. Yeah, Sia wouldn't want to be a. <laughs> so with that abraded in hand, which is that just going to hang out for the time being as mm -hmm. the both players get their lands down in the battlefield. These three deadly disputes need something to munch on, and there is it. Hello, little kitty cat. Now I have been attempting to sing the virtues of Crackling Drake. As yes. you know, Crackling Drake has shown up. Yes. There's currently no real way to kill it no so it could, it could be it could be takahashi is off to a decent start meat hook massacres plural did now. get sideboarded out there's one left in 
Uh huh. Now, Maelstrom Pulse came in. Uh, some other removal spells came in, as opposed to the Meteor Massacre. But look again, if you're rooting for Takahashi, if you're an Is It Phoenix Stan, this is what it looks like. It's Sea uh -huh. Drake getting busy. C it's got to be Crackling Drake doing its thing. <laughs> Oh man, that negate as well. So I'll be interested to see if he's just going to run it out and hope for the best, or if we'll see it played on a turn six to protect it with the negate. Yep. Oh, it's so tempting to kill this cat. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah because there's a, <laughs> the spike field hazard. Maybe I target this, and Deli Dispute says no. So you know which which <laughs> way do you? Well, I guess yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's all true. I mean, really, the question here is, do I want to tap off our Crackling Drake with the hopes of protecting it within the game? Do I have the opportunity to do that sort of thing? I don't know about you, but if I saw a Crackling Drake hit the battlefield, I'm like, all right, kitty cat, you're getting sacrificed. Let's find some removal. Well, I think that's going to happen regardless. Yeah. Because these disputes just need to be cashed in in some way. And so here we go. Yeah. And here so comes the little kitty, and the gate is going to say, no, thank you very much. Okay. No okay, cards, okay. no cats, no fun. Ooh, Soul Pad Lantern. Yeah, and, that, and that, there are obviously going to be instances where Lantern's good, and more Lanterns did come in after sideboard, so we know this mm -hmm. card's going to be here. But if we're talking about Crackling Drake and Soul Guide Lantern, Crackling Drake greater than sign, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't care. Here's an oven. Might get dispute. the abrade now. Yeah, get that abrade out of hand. Would trans, you know, would transform into two cards basically with the deadly dispute. So, Crackling Drake, is it time? And it's not the, it's not the biggest Crackling Drake in the world. Very, very aware of that. But it doesn't take long. And here we go. Just a baby, well, but can it. grow it's up fast. It's a bitty little baby. It's just a 1-4. Okay, Prismari Command, another very useful card. Off the sideboard here for Yuta Takahashi. Now, curious to see if Ichikawa wants to, uh, want to cash in one of these deadly disputes. Yeah, I think he's near, he needs to find some answers here for this Drake, otherwise it's, it's going to kill him very quickly. Yeah, because it doesn't take Drake long. Okay, well, Pulse has made the game less fun. Maelstrom Pulse, clean <laughs> answer to the Drake. It's going to be fired off right away. While the shields are down for Takahashi, no way that he yep. can respond to this. That was kind of the hope. Is, can I get? Can I untap with Drake? Do you not have removal spell for Drake here? Squirrel now, so we've seen this before, Ailey. The engine is starting to come online. There's no trail of crumbs this game, but the engine is starting to get churning a little bit here. Yeah. Spikefield Hazard, so tempting to fire off here on the squirrel. But Yuki Chikawa would just be able to sacrifice that treasure. I mean, he could use the mana, he could not. But it would make it a 2-2. Two -two. Mm-hmm. We have a slight advantage right now to Ishikawa, who is starting to get something building here. There's Flame Blessed Bolt. So a lot of reactive elements right now for Takahashi. Unfortunately yeah. for him, no great way to get proactive and start damage racing. No Phoenix, no Drake. Dragon's Rage Chandlers have been cyborged out, so. Prismari Command would do a decent job of filtering through the top of the library. See which way current Reigning World Champion goes. Plenty of reactive spells, like you mentioned. Flame Blast Bolt, Spikefield Hazard, a Braid, Prismari Command, all of these hit stuff. And you might have to cash in a couple of them to deal with one threat. You just got to remember, like I kind of said a little bit earlier, the longer we go, the better it is for Ishikawa. Eventually, we'll find Trail of Crumbs. Eventually, yeah. we'll get the engine online, just like we saw in game number one. Yeah. Well, we could see if Takahashi pulls the trigger here and tries to kill the squirrel is, okay, you do Spikefield Hazard. Sweet, I'm going to sacrifice something. It gets bigger. Flame Bliss Bolt. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to eat this 
roll now with a deadly speed, so... Let's see how much we fight over this little itty bitty critter. To battle we go. Hmm. Eh, simple enough. Squirrel gets sacrificed, creates mm -hmm. a food token, and that will allow the cat to jump back out the graveyard and keep this engine going. But uh, we'll want to make sure that he's got a sack outlet available and does so in the land. Just in case there's a spike field hazard waiting for him, and he of course knows about that. Yep, Phyrexian Tower. And it is, it is important to note, as you mentioned, that known information in spike field hazard and a braid only unknown card in takashi's hand is that prismari command here for yuki mm -hmm. it's always so tricky to catch this cat i don't know if you've ever tried to catch a cat cedric <laughs> it's not easy nope there's a reason there's a saying it's like herding cats <laughs> they are wily and this one in particular is very much so and he's brought a friend to the party now so Takahashi is in a bad way. And now we can try to take this to this side of the game, which is the Luris aspect of things. Again, I do not believe that Yuki has any illusions that Luris is going to live very long <laughs> or anything like that. If it does, obviously it's a bonus, but mm -hmm. it's more so of play Luris, get something back. Yep. You have to kill Luris. And then you have to kill my Ravenous Squirrel if that is the card that does come back. Because you can't let Luris hang around. For mm -mm. very obvious reasons. So Luris is like the glorified grave digger or yeah, raised yeah. dead type card, which is fine because it's free. Yeah. It's it's free. It just hangs out. It's there when you need it. Bring back one of your engine pieces. And the squirrel is a is a good target for it. There's unholy heat off the top of the library. So like you said, very, very reactive hand here for you to Takahashi. So we're gonna do some more sacking. I'm curious to see how Takahashi is going to use these reactive elements. You know, this uh, this spike field hazard, it's going to have some difficulty really getting much of anything done over the course mm -hmm. of this game, it appears. Uh, the Abrade, are you going to use that for the Creature Land, or do you prefer to use that on the Witch's Oven? Well, are you saving the Abrade for the Creature Land, I guess I'll say, especially when Abrade is known information. Uh, Prismari Command is unknown. What are the what are the goals with that card over, this, over the course of this game? Is it going to be... The treasure mode is almost certainly out, but are we going to do the old draw to discard to blow up an artifact, that sort of thing? Is it reserved for this particular card? Yeah, Luris is a must answer threat. It hits the battlefield. It needs to be dead almost immediately. But before you get a chance to respond, you to Takahashi has to see this ravenous squirrel come back from the graveyard and then we'll be able to take care of the little itty bitty kitty. Nice. So two damage and the destruction of the witch's oven. Yep. Now the oven can get another second before it dies, and uh, there is a deadly dispute ready and waiting to cash in on that. Turn that turn that oven into two cards. Why not? Yeah. It's more the, the question right now is you see uh, you see Ishikawa, I think thinking about a couple of things. One, do I want to use the oven? Looks like the answer is yes. Two. Do I want to use Deadly Dispute? If I do want to, how do I want to go about casting it? That sort of thing right now. So Oven Sacrificing Luris, I think, is the most simplistic of plays in response to this Prismari command, which has now blown up that oven. <laughs> but just, you know, how do you want to use those cards? Food token off the Luris. And now the three one ones. They're just one ones. They're not they're even that like one they're not even like that big of a deal. No, but they'll just kill you in a couple turns. <laughs> Braid, unholy heat, and spike field hazard. <laughs> Doing their best to keep control of this battlefield. For you to Takahashi. Tell you what, I I, I I'm gonna keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. People are gonna get tired of me saying it. Yes. I don't care. Crackling Drake, where are you? Yes. I need you. Come hither. Yeah, that's how I can steal it. <laughs> Steam vents, not a crackling drake. The Takahashi still just on damage control.
And Yuki Ichikawa is just going to keep pressing the advantage here. Has the daily dispute for the end step. Can bring it back with the food. Has now an extra draw engine in this ravenous squirrel. So it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's time to respond in kind here, I think. Maybe sacrifice this to the tower. Again, a little curious because you know your opponent has some amount of counter magic after sideboard, and this dispute is the only thing you have going on. So you just want to make sure that you actually do time this in a meaningful way. Yeah. So first things first. Ooh, Can we get yeah. this out of range? Let's try that. Loving it. Loving it. Very, very cool. You know your opponent has spike. Back. Yeah, I, I <laughs> oh, like yeah. this because like you, you know your opponent has spike field hazard, so you're just kind of yeah. going like, okay, I'm gonna sack some stuff, do some things. Now my thing's a four four. Okay, so your braid, your braid resolves. Next game action. <laughs> Actually, you might just you might just respond now. Okay, I can I can understand this too, which is do this while braid's still on the stack. Turn my creature into a five five, mm -hmm. so that I know your hand is a braid plus spike field hazard, and that's not gonna get it done in this instance. Yeah, it's gonna have to be every <laughs> every single removal spell in Takahashi's hand if he wants to kill this squirrel. And I don't even know if that gets it done. Uh huh. Oh gosh, and now it's drawing cards. Look at this. Look yeah. at this squirrel. All in response to an abrade. That that's what that's what you call a how about no. I guess now I'll say abrade resolves. Yes. Yeah, you know, there's nothing else he can do, so you know. <laughs> Unholy heat okay, hold on. Three, four. Are we short? Let me see. Unholy heat doesn't have an extra thing in the bin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. It doesn't kill it. Can only deal six. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Look man. What that means to Ichikawa. Oh, oh. What a victory.